8 remain standing. We have arrived at the end of our journey, part 4. Which is sad because I really enjoyed this, but everything must end. The time has come to crown a favorite of the favorites. Now, on a personal note, we need silliness now more than ever. World's in a tough spot. My partner told me that this episode and series needs to end on an uplifting note. No more comical doomerism. We got a lot of rebuilding to do. But first, the quarterfinals. There is no way this fight ends in anything other than people being upset. This is an upsetting matchup. I am upset. We knew this was going to get hard. Here's something you definitely didn't know. What did you know? Parasite was edited in Final Cut Pro 7. Sweeps Week surprised the second book. What did you know? The idea for this film came to Bong while filming Snowpiercer. He was challenged by a friend and colleague on set to write a play. He had an idea based on his own experiences as a tutor for a wealthy family in his 20s. We're all parasites. But it's not like Knives Out wasn't also a movie about a bunch of parasites. <laughs> Calm down. Okay. Both movies are special and practically one of a kind in execution. They both bring so much to film. Oh, come on, don't ding the fuck. Okay, decision. Um, deep in the 12th round, Knives Out had simply run out of stabbing energy. The fighters both collapsed onto one another completely exhausted, but it was Knives Out who buckled first. Parasite hit the mat moments later, but they had already won. Parasite, winner by knockout, and the first to enter the semi-finals. This film is a staggering achievement. I feel like Louise wouldn't know what to make of Baby Driver, though it's not like Miles would fare all that well against aliens. He could drive, he could drive the Jeep up. Okay, so two films that are tonally leagues apart must do battle in the birdhouse of my soul to find the favorite of my favorites. Flat out, I will see every single film both Dunny Villeneuve and Edgar Wright make until the end of time. If this matchup were taking place with this year's movies, Last Night in Soho would be standing off against Dune right now and we might be about to have a very different conversation. But in this conversation, Baby Driver is a popcorn cannon. It is the purest celebration of so many different ages of cinema. Edgar Wright lives in perpetual reverence for what has come before in his medium. His understanding of cinema as a medium of art and entertainment is, in my opinion, unrivaled in Hollywood. And it felt really damn incredible to see a thoughtful disability representation in a freaking car movie. However, comma. Arrival is a creation of such love and nuance that just thinking about it makes me want to live in it again. The cinematography is absolutely breathtaking, a stone cold knockout. Humans are terrified, untrusting creatures. These extraterrestrials show up to say, sup, and then all of humanity is like, I got it, it's coming right for it. It's not an alien invasion movie in the traditional sense. Arrival has no grand welcome to earth moment. Humans must overcome themselves. I love both films, but deep in the 10th round, Arrival just overpowered the extremely overcaffeinated Baby Driver. Baby fell to the mat and the towel landed next to him not long after that. The ref stopped the fight and held up Arrival's hand. Godspeed, Miles. I don't think art often gets made on the level of Mad Max Fury Road. It's a film that stands out amongst film. 
One of the most riveting experiences I ever had in a movie theater. Black Klansman, in the same breath, is a masterpiece. No one does tone like Spike. But it is time for us to say goodbye and hopefully not get demonetized in the future for putting imagery of the... That's not why it's going home, it just sounds nice to have that. Films on the execution level of Mad Max Fury Road don't come along ever. None of the other Mad Max movies or anything else George Miller has ever directed is on this level. Sorry babe, pig in the city, I still love you! It is one of the most visually engaging films I've ever seen. In the 12th round, Mad Max Fury Road was just too explosive to deal with. They just started to pull ahead in the fight. Max doesn't get tired. Winner by decision. Adieu, Spike Lee. Welcome, friends and friendos, to the most lopsided match of all time. In the blue corner, a CGI love letter to Jack Kirby and found families. Into the Spider-Verse. And in the taupe corner, that feeling when you know you want and need something, but you have no idea what it is. Lady Bird. Booyah. Lady Bird is magnificent, clever, endearing, engaging, and hilariously sort of a hey letter to Sacramento. Lady Bird took out some extremely heavy hitters. What a journey through the bracket she took, but this is where we must part ways. Lady Bird, is that your given name? Yeah. Why is it in quotes? I gave it to myself. It's given to me by me. I've never seen a reaction to a movie like Into the Spider-Verse. Endlessly, relentlessly creative, meaningful artistry. It did something incredible with computer graphics that celebrated the 2D hand articulated art form. I'm in love with this new age of CG pictures, the technology caught up to the creativity. I'm still not quite over how many amazing awesome things this movie did with Spider-Man lore. And I'm equally, sorry to say, still not over the end of The Amazing Spider-Man 2. I know Andrew Garfield's having a Garfaldesance or whatever, but the ending of that movie is ass. I've always wanted to say that. Into the Spider-Verse actually said something. A lot of some things. Anyone can be Spider-Man, and their run did not end there. In the seventh round, you could tell that both fighters were tired. Lady Bird simply stated, I don't really want to be here anyway, so... And, and she, pa she passed out. Or is that technically a forfeit? Honestly, this metaphor has gotten so far away from me, I don't... Okay, we said goodbye to four. Surely the next round... <laughs> Yeah, we were probably always ending up here. And you know, thanks for hanging out with me as we mercilessly pit all my favorite movies from the last seven years against each other. It made me so happy to see all the movies people are discovering from watching this. Okay, let's get into the first match of the semi-finals. Humans, for the most part, don't have a clue. They don't want one or need one either. They're happy. They think they have a... Good bead on things. People are smart, they can handle it. A person is smart. People are dumb, panicky, dangerous animals, and you know it. I think this one is gonna feel like a cheat, but our favorite movies are the ones that are closest to us. We relate to films for a multitude of reasons. I think a lot of people probably have a strange connection to Parasite they never thought about. I saw this movie in a theater in 2019 and minus Knives Out and Rise of Skywalker, I haven't been to a theater since. Parasite was a revelation in the theater. Its precision is what makes the audience so uncomfortable. And also its grim illustrations of the far-reaching dichotomies of capitalism. It was a wonderful film going experience for me. I just let a filmmaker take me on a ride with no idea where we were going. I'm glad that that is one of my last theater memories for what will probably be the foreseeable future. But on the other hand... I have a weird relationship with Arrival. 
2017 was a year I never really escaped. I couldn't really sit at a computer for longer than 20 minutes at a time, and I hacked that entire episode together with what I was able to record. It's all out of order, it's all jumbled, like Louise. I felt really close to this movie for a minute, and it was incredible. The loneliness in this movie spoke to me. That was probably the hardest episode of this show to make in retrospect. I sound like I'm choking to death on every word. It feels like a hundred years ago. We bring our own wounds to art. It's what speaks to us. I clearly have a hefty and well-documented infatuation with humanity present in the furthest dimensions of science fiction. Because all science fiction is really just humans commenting on ourselves. The best science fiction is not an objective answer. They're the stories that teach you something about you. Before the fight had even started and 10 years after it had long since ended, Arrival landed the blow that knocked Parasite onto the mat for good. Winner by knockout in a temporally confusing manner, Arrival. And now, the least surprising semifinals matchup of all time. We were always going to end here. Now, as for how one is supposed to select a winner here, I'm I'm kind of at a loss. Um, okay, here's a place to start. I absolutely think this is the greatest single shot in a movie of all time. It says everything. Miles' leap of faith into his ascension to become Spider-Man. Both of these movies are impulsive visual grenades. I don't think it would be possible to choose one as a favorite on visuals alone. And I think this one comes down solely to what each movie meant to me. One is an introduction of a beloved comic book character, and, and one is a resurrection, and I'm pretty sure beloved is too strong a word to use on a Mel Gibson vehicle from the 80s. Unfair statement incoming. Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse is the best Spider-Man movie ever made. Comic book movies nowadays come with baggage and, oddly, homework, so that weighs against Into the Spider-Verse in a slightly unfair way. Even typing the words Spider-Man right now gives me hides. As of writing this, right now, December 2021, I gotta go with George Miller here. I don't think we will see a filmmaker top this in our lifetimes, unless, of course, George tops himself with that whole Furiosa thing. A movie explicitly about a group of people declaring that they are not things to be owned and abused, and the wayward lizard eater that helps them escape. Tell us the last time. In the tenth round, Mad Max and his band of weirdos overpowered the various and diverse Spider-Men. The entire audience held his breath as Miles fell to the mat. Mad Max Fury Road, winner by knockout. Which brings us to... And here we are, the finals. It should end here. This channel had its first growth spurt because of the Fury Road episode, and we already kind of talked about my state of being during the Arrival episode, and movies that are close to us are the ones that stick with us. I'm glad these are the final two standing. Which brings us to... Well gosh, Louise versus Max. What a lovely, lovely day. In the blue corner, a thoughtful meditation on loss and nonlinear existences, Dunny Villeneuve's Arrival. And in the teal and orange corner, an action movie that also made you think about stuff, even if you didn't want to, Mad Max Fury Road. Mad Max Fury Road is one of the best silent films ever made. Crushed it, nailed it. Everything is communicated visually. You don't have to hear any dialogue at all. The script for this movie was a collection of storyboards. Fury Road is a cacophonous tapestry of perfectly executed madness held together with the power of FRIENDSHIP! You know, I thought it'd be harder to say goodbye to Fury Road, but Arrival is just that affecting to me.
It defined part of my life. You arrive as the person you were supposed to be. It's not gentle. It's not sympathetic. You simply arrive. I guess it really is that simple. Arrival is my favorite of my favorites. A movie that empowers grace and knowledge. A movie about win-win situations mutated by the powerful to manipulate the earthly power around them. It's a film about cooperative play, work together, and everyone wins. There is no universally accepted solution to most infinitely complex problems, so the only solution is to work together. Pushing the limits of existence, being who we were always meant to be, to arrive. Arrival wins because it is a non-zero-sum game. Okay, this is where you want to get to, right? That is the question. Okay, so first we need to make sure that they understand what a question is. See you next year.